In this lecture, we are going to create an API to get the details of the logged in user. So let's go to VS Code. And in the controllers folder, we are going to create a new file and I'm going to call it as user controller. Inside this user controller file, just like auth controller, we are also going to import this router and we are going to import this user model. Now let's go ahead and let's create an API for getting the details of the currently logged in user. So on the router object, we are going to call a get method because this time we want to fetch some details. So from the server, whenever we want to fetch some details, that time we make a get request. And to handle that get request on this router object, we have this get method. Here we need to specify the path. So let's call it as get logged user. So this will be the path. And then whenever a user makes a request to this endpoint, we are going to execute this callback function. This callback function is going to be executed asynchronously. So let's use this async keyword. And this callback function is also going to receive the request and response object. Okay. Now, before this method gets executed, what we also want is this route should be accessible only to the authenticated users. And that's why we are going to use this auth middleware before executing this method. And to use the auth middleware, we are going to import it. So here, let's say auth middleware. We are creating a variable called auth middleware. You can name this variable anything. Let's keep this M in capital. And let's go ahead and let's require the file from where we are exporting the auth middleware. So from the current directory, we are going to move one directory up. There we are going to go to the middlewares folder. And from there, we are going to require this auth middleware file. And from within this middleware, we are exporting the auth middleware that will be assigned to this auth middleware variable. So now whenever a new request will come to this endpoint, before executing this callback function, we want to execute this auth middleware. Only if everything goes right in this auth middleware and the next method from this auth middleware is called, then only the request will reach to this callback function. Okay. And all this callback function is going to do is it is going to return the details of the currently logged in user. Now, how are we going to get the details of the currently logged in user? Because we don't know which user is logged in. We don't have any user ID or any user object which is going to come with this get request using which we are going to get the details of the currently logged in user. Right? Well, if you remember in the last lecture when we created this auth middleware, there we added this user ID to this request body. And this user ID is the user ID of the currently logged in user because we have extracted this user ID from this JSON web token. So we are going to use this user ID to get the details of the user, the currently logged in user, and we are going to send it in the response. Let's go back to user controller and there let's write the logic for that. So using the user model on this, we are going to call find one method. And to this find one method, we are going to pass a filter object. And here we want to filter the user based on underscore ID property. And which user do we want to filter? We want to filter that user whose ID matches the value of request.body dot user id okay so here on this request body we are adding this user id property and here we are reading that user id property and we are filtering that user from the user's collection whose id matches the value of this user id property which we have attached to this request body in this auth middleware and this here it is going to run asynchronously so let's use this await keyword and this method here it is going to return us a user object so let's go ahead and let's create a variable let's call it user 
and let's assign that user object to this user variable okay and here i'm going to write this code inside a try catch block so let's first go ahead and let's first add a try catch block so if any error occurs inside this try block in that case we are going to send an error response but if there is no error in this try block and if we have get that user based on this user id in that case we are going to return the details of that user we are going to return this user object in the response so in this response object i am going to have the message property and for the message here let's say user fetched successfully okay and then success is true and then we are also going to pass the data and in this case the data is going to be this user object all right with this let's save the changes and let's also export this router from here so here let's say module dot export we want to export this router now let's save this file let's go to app.js there just like how we have imported this auth router we are also going to import the user router so here i'll copy and paste that and i'll call it as user router and here let's change the file name to user controller okay and then let me copy this line let's paste it one more time and here i'm going to pass user router and here the path will be slash api slash user okay let's save the changes and let's quickly test this get logged user api so let's go to postman here we are going to make a get request so first of all i'm going to copy this url let's paste it here and here the path is slash api slash user and then get logged user okay so we are going to make a get request to this url now if i click on this send button let's see what we get so if i click on this send button we are getting this error it says it cannot get the details from this api because it is not found and that's because here we also have login so we need to remove this login from here let's make a request now and you see that api so this get logged user api is returning us the details of the currently logged in user okay so the first name is john last name is smith email is john smith at gmail.com so as you can see it is returning us the details of that user and this is possible because this user is an authenticated user because with this request we are also sending this json web token right and since this is a valid json web token we are getting the response but if i change it so let's say if i remove this last character and now if i send the request we should not get the response you see here we have the message invalid signature that's because this json web token is invalid and because of that the request was not forwarded to get logged user api this error we are getting from the auth middleware itself in the auth middleware since this token was not valid here an error occurred and from there this error response has been returned okay but if the token is valid so let me go ahead and let me add that character again so if the token is valid in that case we will get the response we'll get the details of the logged in user so in this lecture we implemented the api for getting the details of the currently logged in user in the next lecture let's go ahead and let's implement the api to get all the users except the current user from the database this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day